What's up guys? Welcome to Transformation. My name is Patrick Blake Leeper and I was born without legs. I was destined to spend my life in a wheelchair, but with the right mindset and with sheer determination, I now hold eight Paralympic track and field medals. Not stopping there, I'm now on a quest to become the fastest man alive and to inspire others to overcome their own limitations. Today, I'm talking to Caitlin. Growing up, Caitlin was bullied for being underweight and different from everyone else. But after nearly dying during emergency surgery, she gained a new perspective on life and fell in love with fitness. Welcome to Transformation. Caitlin, welcome to the show Transformation. I just want to say thank you so much for taking your time and to tell me and the viewers your amazing, amazing story. Thank um, you for having me. You got so much to tell, so I don't want to waste no time uh, with the introduction. So please tell me, like, what was your childhood like? Growing up as a kid, I was very close to my family. Um, Outside of my family, it was very rough for me. I was bullied growing up my whole life. My whole high school experience was not like your average high school experience because I was busy helping my parents, taking care of my grandparents, and it was very hard. My one grandmother passed away, and two days later, my other grandmother passed away from my dad's side. And to just have that happen, hit me really hard and I told my mom, I was like, I'm not feeling too great. Um, my stomach's been hurting a lot lately and we just thought it was maybe the grief. At that time, I was so underweight that I avoided mirrors for a solid eight months. Any reflection, I avoided at my salad best because in all honesty, I was giving up on life. I was in a very dark, lonely place and I was in crucial, crucial pain and I couldn't couldn't even breathe for that matter. And I was ran through MRIs and CAT scans, multiple, multiple bug works. Um, They're just, you know, running it all through the list until they finally found the tumor through an MRI scan. Wow. When you first went to the hospital, what did the doctors tell you? Um, it's classified as a dermoid tumor. So the doctor said, this was your twin that just um, did not make it. You absorbed the twin. And now we have to go in and we have to remove it. My tumor wrapped around my appendix and was crushing down on it. And my intestines were also, two feet of them, was tangled up in a huge knot. So the doctor stopped the surgery and he called my parents, which is never a good thing. And he said, I can't do the surgery alone. I have to call in two other surgeons. Um, this is a lot worse than what we thought. Um, the only thing right now you guys can do is just pray and hope. And what was supposed to be an hour and a half surgery became six and a half hours for a battle for my life. Wow, that's, that's intense to think that, you know, what. You go in just for, like you said, an hour and a half surgery and, and then you, you come out and, you know, you've been there for six hours. What was that, that, that click, that it factor for you that you say, you know what, you know, times are hard, but I'm going to turn it around. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let this break me. I'm going to keep fighting and I'm going to keep pushing. Like, I'm not going to give up on my life. I think it was the second or third night I was at the hospital and I was watching my mom uh, sleeping and I rolled over and I watched my heart monitor and I was like, I can't, like, I, I got to keep going for them and, you know, I, you know, it was my twin that they took out of me and I need to live this life now, not just for me, but for the both of us. Like, I was given a second chance for a reason and the next day it was just, um, I just had this positive attitude and everything just started going uphill for me. Yeah, so you go in and they think it's a tumor, then they, they come out and they find out it's, it's your twin sister and they had to remove her. Like, how did you feel emotionally? It was, you know, for a lot of people, they couldn't handle a situation like this, but you came back stronger. I got it, I have to know, like, what was you thinking through this whole situation? It was just, you know, the question started rolling in my head. What would she would have been like? What would life would have been like if she was here? And I just believe everything happens for a reason. She didn't make it for a reason. Yeah, so true. You know, I, I realized the things that I've been through in my life is that, you know, everything does happen for a reason. The good and the bad and everything that you go through is for a reason. But that's not it. You don't, 
doesn't stop there for you, right? You just didn't say, oh, I, I survived this and I'm done. You took it to a whole nother level that I'm just so intrigued about. Explain to me what, what, what made you want to get up and, and take it to that level of your fitness and in your life. It was just wanting to just be healthy again. And I first started off running um, around the horse pasture and, you know, the horses be looking at me like, what the heck is she doing? You know, <laughs> usually, usually it's us out there, but now it's her. And uh, my friend said, hey, you should try and incorporate some weights. I think it would really help you out. And I was like, all right, um, well, I don't have a membership to a gym. I'm not really into a gym or not really too crazy about this. I just want to do something to help me stay healthy. So I was literally taking like Tide bottles and filling them with rocks and I was in the basement and I was doing like kettlebell swings to film and everything. And I just really grew to love it from doing all these random workouts in the basement. And um, I finally caved in and I got a membership. So <laughs> it started from there and I just really fell in love with the weightlifting. And for the competing side of it, I don't know what it, what it was. I just woke up one morning and I was like, you know what? I once looked into the light of death and I want to stand in the light of victory and this is this is it. This is how I'm going to show it. What did competing do to your self-confidence? Like I'm sure it's more than a physical change. I know it's a mental change as well as as the, as the months and the years progress. My confidence just like went through the roof. It was it was crazy. Like it's just something that I want to show everybody else, you know, you need to learn to love yourself, love the skin that you're in and be proud of it. And it doesn't matter, you know, what you look like, if you have curves or, you know, if you're thin or whichever, um, you know, and if you're not happy, you can make the difference. And that's what I did. I was not happy, so I made the difference. The only thing that's ever gonna stop you are barriers that are held in your mind and you just need to break through them and tell yourself it's possible. Yeah, it's so true. I always tell people, when you can look at yourself in the mirror and accept your flaws and all, right? It's who you are. Like, I look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, you have no legs. That's, that's who you are as a person. Now, what are you going to do about it? That's so huge. So when you're, when you're like in grind mode in the gym, what do you do to keep yourself motivated? I literally look up at the ceiling. It just reminds me of that light that I looked at when I woke up from surgery and then thinking about, you know, what I told myself, you know, that, you know, this is not only just my life, this is, you know, the life as well that my sister did not get the chance to live. Like now I got to do this for both of us. That's so awesome. Kaylin, thank you so much for taking your time and just sharing your story, like not only with me, but to, to the amazing fans that's, that's listening and, and watching. And what would be that one advice or, or saying that you would tell them to keep them moving day by day? You need to use your ambition as your weaponry and you need to make determination your anthem. You need to block out everybody else and you need to look in the mirror and realize that person that you see is your greatest challenge in life. And that is the only person that you need to impress. That is the only person you need to love. That's the only person that you need to make happy. And that's all that's important. And if you're going through a hard time right now, you just need to realize that there is sunshine at the end. Amazing, Kaylin. Thank you so much for your time, and I really appreciate you for sharing your story from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. What an amazing story. One thing that I took away from Caitlin is that accepting who you are, flaws and all, is so important. You have to wake up each and every day and truly love yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love hearing your inspiring stories. So tell us about your own lives in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe for new episodes every week. This is Patrick Blake Leeper. You're watching Transformation. I'll see you next time.